What is up guys? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And today we are here with an uh, interesting topic. This is the Republicans' best case scenario for 2022 for the Senate races and that governorships. Now again, we don't have redistricting yet, so I can't do house races just yet. But for now, I want to treat you guys to a special video on my opinion what the best case scenario is for the Republicans. Before we start this video, hope you guys enjoy these type of videos. If you guys do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and yes, thank you guys for watching, and let's get started. So, let us start the 2021 races right off the bat. So, California, best case scenario, the recall wins by a pretty wide margin, and Larry Elder becomes governor by like a lean margin. Two, three, maybe four point victory for him. That's what some polls are indicating. So maybe it could happen, but for now, let's just say best case scenario. Another best case scenario is if Virginia goes back to the Republicans, possibly for the last time. Youngkin's running a strong campaign, getting a lot of support in Nova. So that race, not insane. But again, best case scenario. Don't go around saying this is what real America thinks is going to happen, yada, yada. But as of now, I do believe Youngkin loses by like 2-3%. But best case scenario, him winning, eh, not insane. Now for New Jersey, really not much is just going to change. I mean, he maybe lean at best, but really nothing you can much change for that race. It's kind of set in stone. Now, let us get to 2022. Best case scenario, let's start with California. Get this one out of the way. Best case scenario, let's say Larry Elder has a skyrocketing approval rating, Republicans in New California get their shit together, and the people of California aren't just going to vote Democrat down ballot anymore. And you need a lot to happen, but in the best case scenario, if Larry Elder is very popular, the Democrats implode upon himself in California, not crazy to say he wins by a very slim margin. In a red wave year, especially in a best case scenario, if he wins by a landslide in 2022 or 2021, which would be like a three point win, not crazy to say he could win it somehow by under one. If he's a popular governor, all things go right for the Republicans. They could win California in 2022 if they get the recall passed, elders a popular governor, and the Democrats implode upon themselves. So, we'll just get that out of the way. I do believe Elder, that's his best case scenario, like a half point win. All right. Now, let's get this, let's get all rid of the quite obvious states in a best case scenario. Guys, no. In a best case scenario, these states are not going anywhere for the Republicans. These are absolutely staying there in a very best case scenario. The Democrats, you got Hawaii, Maryland, because no Larry Hogan. And Rhode Island, <laughs> that's about it. That's all the safe states in a best case scenario for the Democrats. Now you see two states in Northeast, I am not put as safe blue, but some recent things happened out in New York, and we'll talk about that in a tiny bit. For now though, let us get through all the likely Republican states, the lean Republican states, and so forth. In a best case scenario, Arizona and Wisconsin would be a likely governorships. Um, like Sean Duffy runs Wisconsin. Somebody solid Arizona runs. The Democrats are tripping upon themselves. You need a lot to go right for that to happen. But in a best case scenario, five, six point win in a red wave year. Not crazy in those two states, especially in a red trending state like Wisconsin. And uh, still a lean red state in the state of Arizona. Now, again, Doug Ducey won by a very solid margin in 2018. He's not running. But, again, it kind of proves that Republicans can win at a fairly decent level in Arizona in the right environment. But for now, though, I really can't think of um, any other state in a best case scenario that likely Republican for this election. Now, for Democrats, you could probably include Illinois and Connecticut. Best case scenario... Run somebody in Illinois that's very popular statewide could get it within 10, maybe 8. In Connecticut, it's always close at a national level, but again, best case scenario, I think like a 6-point win for the Democrat. That clown is holding on by a thread, though, so it could change, but if he screws up somehow, may flip, but 
I'm going to keep that likely them. Again, I really, even a best case scenario, I, scenario, sorry, I really don't see any Demo Republicans statewide running that are decent enough. Now, there is an elephant in the room, as you can tell. There's, well, Colorado, not to forget that, but there's one state in particular that people are going to go in the comments down below, taking this out of context, uh, pulling Alex Jones, etc. Guys, this is a best case scenario. If Andrew Cuomo, especially with the recent polls, with the recent stuff that came out, if he runs for re-election, somehow gets a Democratic nominee, um, how is that crazy to say um, what I'm about to say? But we'll get to New York in a little bit. Don't worry. But again, that's if Andrew Cuomo somehow gets the nomination, which is actually a good chance because Democrats are screwed at statewide level. They really... Another state where they're running out of statewide officials that I can think of. But again, that's just best case scenario. I'm going to touch upon it. For the lean Democrat states, Oregon and Maine. Republicans have a, used to be a very popular governor there. I think he would lose by two-ish. I really don't think that lunatics would lose at all. Sadly, but kind of just how I think things are going to roll this time around. Now for the lean Republican states, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania... And I'll leave Michigan alone. Actually, Michigan. Because if James Craig runs a phenomenal campaign and Whitler continues to shoot herself, again, not insane to say this. In a best case scenario, everything goes right for the Republicans. Absolutely best case scenario. Again, if every single thing goes right. Now you have three states left. <laughs> again, this is like an R plus 10 environment. This is the absolute maximum for this of happening but i do believe the clown in minnesota would still win i think cuomo would barely hold on in a worst case scenario for him i think he barely holds on he may he may somehow lose it i just think there's too many idiots in that state to vote him out fully but new mexico i do believe would flip to the republicans and this is the governor side of things again this is the absolutely best case scenario, like R plus 10 environment. And like with Larry Elder running in California, he wins by a solid margin. That's what it comes down to. This is absolutely best case scenario. New York comes down to if Cuomo is like a nominee somehow. That's the only way it's possible for it to get that close. Now we're getting to the Senate races. All right, again, disclaimer, R plus 10 type of environment, which has happened in 2010, I believe. So, safe Republican states in this scenario, I'm just gonna, just gonna, you know, avoid all of this because this is obvious in a R plus 10 environment. Give me a break. This would, Ohio would be safe R. Even if Josh Mandel ran, if it's that favorable environment, he wins. I mean, that's not nuts to say. Now, for safe Democrats say it's California, Washington, Hawaii. Illinois, yeah, could maybe get within 10, but you're really going to have one of, one very popular Republican around the ballot. So it's either you flip Illinois here or you flip it here. Either way, it's like likely safe Democrat. Maryland, we'll keep that safe D. Again, I don't think Hogan's going to run. Highly doubt it, even best case scenario. I just don't see him running. Connecticut, New York, and Vermont. So you're left with nine toss-up races. And likely Republican states are going to be Wisconsin, New Hampshire, if Sununu runs, which is all but certain at this point. And that would be it. That is really the only two likely states. Maybe North Carolina. And we just get out of the way. That's a lean state. Borderline likely. It's not going to really move away from the Republicans, nor towards Republicans. It's going to kind of always stay the same. So... Lean Republican, not crazy to say. Now, for Colorado, Oregon, likely margins, you run like Cory Gardner in Colorado, and the idiot in Oregon somehow blows it, could be within 10 for both states. Again, best case scenario for the Republicans. Now, for the lean states, you can probably just mark all three of these as lean Republican. Georgia, this is like if you have Gary Black running. Arizona, we have Blake Masters, he's a Chad, 
complete total Chad. He's the best candidate possible. And if Mick, Mick, uh, not Mick Sally, I was about to say her, but Mark Kelly, if she, he screws up, which there's a chance tomorrow there's a big vote, if he screws up, he's done. So, not crazy to say that. Now, Nevada, I think it's going to be a close race either way. There's still the certain Las Vegas machine that's somewhat going to be there. It's going to be a little bit dead without the Democrat establishment running the show there. But as of now, I think it's still like tilt lean on. And this is the best case scenario for the Republicans in 2022. Absolutely best case scenario. Maybe get closer in like Connecticut somehow. But outside of that, th this is the absolute floor for Republicans. Same thing for the governorships. This is if literally every single thing goes right. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, smash the like button down below. Subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and yes. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.